Welcome back to Believe in Colts. I'm Lawrence Owen. With me, as usual, is my guy, Gerard Powers. Gerard, training camp, one yeah. week away, man. One week away. And, um, yeah, this is going to be kind of exciting. I don't have, we don't have a whole lot to talk about this week. So we're going to break down our 32 top, top 32 teams. We're going to rank them in order. Um, how difficult was this for you to, to put together? Uh, a little difficult, but some of these teams is just like, uh, all you guys are about the same anyway. So whether you're 29 or 28 or 30, you know, you're still at the bottom of it. Uh, but I think for me, it was difficult for that like 10 to 15 range, that 10 to 16 range. It was kind of kind of tough because some of the teams you're like, man, do do they deserve to be in the top 10 or, you know, so, uh, you know, it's all about preference. But it was kind of fun to kind of, you know, see, uh, you know, the different teams and where they're at right now and what I think, you know, they're going to be going into the season and going forward. Yeah, I had a little, I've got a little bit of a, an advantage at this point, I think, because I have been doing uh, my breakdown of every team in the AFC uh, on my other, um, on my other uh, podcast. So I, I've been breaking down their schedules, breaking down new additions, losses, stuff like that. But at the same time, you've been there, done that. So you got an advantage in that situation. Uh, speaking of rankings, uh, you want to use our rankings? I wouldn't suggest using our rankings to bet oh. this year. But uh, if you do plan on betting, our partners at Bet Online continue to be the number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. Find all the latest odds, news, and sports developments, including Major League Baseball, the latest fighting news, and even next season's early NFL futures. With training camp around the corner, Bet Online has opened up odds for team wins, division futures, and of course, the Super Bowl. Head over to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use our promo code BELIEVE, that's B L E A V, to get the bonus and get into the action. Bet online where the game starts. Yeah, please don't use our stuff to bet with. All right, because this is this is the first time I've ever done a 32 team ranking, and uh, I don't know if it's going to be great or not. You know, we're just going to find out, right? <laughs> um. So, when they start it off, yeah, we're gonna what we're gonna do? Jaguars. Hmm? Oh, you got the Jaguars dead last. The reason why, and this is the reason why, even though I do think they had a good offseason, I thought they brought in some good players. I thought they drafted well. You know, you got Doug Peterson there, new head coach. You got new D.C. Everything's new. Um, but after what we saw last year and everything that they went through with Urban Meyer and, and all those things, man, I cannot put them above anybody else other than the Texans, which was hard for me to decide which one deserves to be last. But I went with Jacksonville, man. Who, who, who did you go with? The Atlanta Falcons. Ooh, ooh see what I'm saying? How I forgot about those little. <laughs> <laughs> the Falcons forgot. are completely and utterly bereft of talent right now uh, with the, the loss of of Matt Ryan. And uh, they, they have uh, a couple guys on offense, a couple guys on defense, but – Who's going to be slinging the rock? Is, is Right? I mean, that's <laughs> – well, there's your pick right there. Lock it in. Um, but I, you, you got Kyle Pitts, and then is Cordell going to be running the football? I mean uh, – Lose Calvin Ridley. You lost Calvin Ridley for the Yeah, year. yeah. There's so so much there. So, I, I've, I've, I've got the Atlanta Falcons dead last in the NFL this year. All right. Who, can't go wrong. Can't go wrong with that one. And, uh, Who you got at number 31? Number 31, I had the Falcons. I mean, I'm sorry, not the Falcons. I had the uh, the Texans at 31. I had the Texans at 31. Just because, same situation, quarterback, you know, who's slinging the rock, who's catching the rock, who's running the rock, who's playing defense, who's making play. Like, we, it's just a bunch of what ifs going on with the Texans right now. Um, management, front office, all that type of stuff seems like it's just in a flux. Uh, can't really depend on them to go out there and just win games. I think they're they're literally trying to 
build from the bottom, uh, especially after the whole Des uh, Deshaun Watson situation. Uh, they're they're just they're they're stuck right now in a in a hard place. So I, I went with uh I went with the Texans. Who did you go with? The Texans. Okay. <laughs> I have the Texans at number thirty one. Um, pretty much a lot a lot of the exact same things that you just said. Uh, plus the fact, you know, their quarterback, I don't think he's a franchise guy. I don't think he's bad. I think he's got a lot of, uh, I think he's a decent quarterback, but when you're bereft of talent, the way they are and the way that this, this organization is, is sitting right now without a premier quarterback, you're just not going to be, uh, expected to go very far in the NFL. Now, next year might be a different story, uh, because they have, picks upon picks to work with. They got a lot of young guys there. Um, but this year, again, this is, it's going to be a learning curve for everyone involved there. Um, I'm with you. Number 30. Number 30. That's when I went with the Atlanta Falcons. Um, you know, just like you said, for the same reasons you said, uh, pretty much. I do think Marcus Mariota uh, has been looking for another opportunity to where he can kind of, you know, shine and uh, change the narrative of his career. And uh, I mean, this is his opportunity. You know, you go to Atlanta, Matt Ron's gone. You don't have any any type of good receivers. You don't have any type of things to work with. So everybody's literally going to be looking at Marcus Mariota to kind of carry the load this year. So he can kind of really show what he can do with a team that don't really have much talent around and everybody's looking for him to make everybody better. Uh, but I had the Falcons, you know, you lose Matt Ryan, you lose all your big time, you know, receivers and playmakers and all that you're trying to rebuild. So who did you have? <laughs> Uh, we're sitting at 30. We're sitting at 30. The New York football giants. The New York football giants. Now they have Saquon Barkley. They have a couple decent receivers over there. But I sat there and watched this defense last year play games while the ball was, you know, in play. And the defense be standing there with their hands on their hips. Okay. Right. right. I, 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 I watched this team give up in games and with that kind of locker room uh, where the team itself just gives up uh, in, in situations, uh, the offensive line was awful. Um, the, the defense is not the same defense that we remember a couple years ago when we were like, you don't want to face this Giants defense. Right. The, 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 that same defense that against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers a couple years ago was just lights out against Tom Brady and all and that high flying Super Bowl winning uh team. It's just not the same team anymore. And uh I think they're kind of in in flux obviously with their quarterback and Daniel Jones, you know. Yeah. yeah uh, proof here for yep. Exactly. So uh I got the Giants sitting at number 30 personally. The Giants sitting at number 30. I have at tw we're at 29, right? Mhm. Mm and at 29 I'm trying to, I had my stuff written on this computer. Everything keeps popping up. So please excuse me. At 29, I had the Detroit Lions. Whoa. And um, Detroit had a year this past year uh, to where they won a couple games. Don't get me wrong. It looks like they're, you know, on the, the I guess, the rise, you know, trying to, you know, come back. They, I thought they drafted well as well. You get Jameis Williams. You know, as the top receiver out of Alabama, who's coming off of ACL, so you're not really expecting him to do much uh, this year unless he just has some type of, you know, great off season to wear that thing and healed up fast. Uh, you got Jared, you got Jared uh, Goff at quarterback. Uh, you know, I mean, you know, golf is golf. You know, I know he went to the Super Bowl and you know did those things, but. You know, you're not really looking much into golf, but I do believe those guys believe in the head coach. I do believe those guys are playing hard. They don't look like the same old uh, Detroit Lions, but until you go out there on the field and prove it, everybody is still looking at you as the bottom feeders of the of the league. Who did you have at 29? This is where I finally slide the Jacksonville Jaguars in. Um, I, I feel like this team has got a lot of talent to – to too much talent to be the bottom feeder of the NFL. Now, granted, they're the I, I still have them ranked the fourth worst team in the NFL. But 
at the same time, you're going into your second year with a, a few of your big name players. Mm-hmm. You made some moves in the off season to try to grab some guys to help your second year quarterback. Uh, again, whole new situation and coaching and stuff. You know, get that out of your rearview mirror. A fresh start, looking ahead. Um, <clears throat> I don't think the Jacksonville Jaguars will finish dead last this year, but I, I don't expect them, you know, to be vying for a playoff spot. Either. That's where I got. That's where I got Jacksonville. Who you got for number twenty-eight? Twenty-eight. I'm gonna go. See, this is where I was. I was like for my twenty-eight and twenty-seven. Because uh, you just had New York Giants twenty-nine, right? So my 27 and 28 was the two that I was just like, all right, this is why I'm just going to say you guys are just at the bottom. It don't matter if you rank this one or that one. I I went with the Carolina Panthers. And the reason is word on the street, not too many people is, uh, you know, liking how things is ran over there. I mean, you, you, you look at Stefan got up out of there. Uh, with Matt Rule, you know, he's having the college style type of things. You get Sam Dar- Darnold uh, thinking that he was going to help. It didn't. Now you're getting Baker Mayfield. So um, just a lot of questions going on over there, Carolina. Um, who, who, who did you have going at that pick? The Chicago Bears. Ooh, that's a good one. Uh, the Bears, man, I'm telling you, until they learn – to figure out who they are on offense, they're not going anywhere in the NFL. You, you're not going to win games without some kind of offense in the NFL. Now, I understand that uh, they're, they're definitely going with uh, their second-year quarterback this year, from what I'm understanding. Uh, but, man, you lost your number one wide receiver, who was an absolute stud, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, now, look, this is a situation where Matt Eberflus – uh, the new head coach over there could prove a lot of people wrong, right? Uh, the, a lot of a lot of people out there think that uh, the Bears should have went with an offensive mind. Well, Nagy was an offensive mind, and where did that get him, right? That's true. That is true. So um, this is a situation where the Bears defense still very very good. You got Eberflus over there, able to going to be working with that defense. Uh, I don't have a problem with their defense, but their offense, it's a bad situation. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens with the Chicago Bears this year. Who you got uh, at number 27? The, the defensive coordinator for the Bears came from the Colts, too. Um, Alex, mm-hmm. yeah, yep. secondary coach. He was actually my secondary coach when I played with the Colts. So good, awesome. good, good start over there. Uh, we're at what, 27? Yes. Oh, uh, and 27 was my um, – Giants. That's the one I said I had the Carolina and, and Giants going back and forth. And, you know, same reason as you. Daniel Daniel Jones still uh, hasn't done anything to make us believe in the hype yet. So this is definitely the year. And remember, the owner early in the year came out vouching for him, you know, came out backing him. I think it was around combine time uh, talking how they believed in him. But I more so think it's it's another prove a year. If he don't get it done this year, uh, definitely out of there. Um Drafted decently. You want Saquon to come back healthy. I mean, I want Saquon to come back healthy. I mean, I want to see the guy, you know, uh, live up to the potential that uh, the person that he can be. But for the same reasons you said, uh, you know, just too many questions and, you know, just don't got a lot of pieces that they need to succeed right now. My number 27. It's, it's funny. We, we, we're we just back sl- and forth. Back yeah. And forth. Yeah. yeah. Carolina Panthers. Yep. Uh, <laughs> very much similar situation, uh, where, where you're discussing, you know, with the whole quarterback situation, uh, the running back situation is CMC going to be healthy this year. Who knows? Right. Um, they, they do have a legit wide receiver. Uh, I'll give them that. Uh, but there's just, there's too many questions over there. Uh, the, as you said, the team is in a little bit of a flux and we know we've seen it. When reports are talking about, you know, there's problems in the locker room or something in the off season, Mm -hmm. then that generally really follows through into the season. I mean, we we, we heard a lot about that, like with Jacksonville last year and look what happened. Right. Right. Uh, So it'll be interesting uh, to see if the Carolina brass 
uh, can get a firm hold on things over there and, you know, get the, get these players uh, to actually believe in the organization and, and those around them. Um, Cause otherwise, yeah, they're, they, they got talent over there. They, yeah. they definitely have talent, but, uh, un- unless unless they're all on the same page, that that talent don't go very far. It does not, and we are at what twenty six. Yes, twenty six. That's where I had the Chicago Bears. Justin Fields, year two. Everybody blamed McNaggy and the coaching staff for the development issues last year. This year, we're not going to have no one to blame but Justin Fields if it doesn't work out. Uh, and then I think another big piece is Khalil Mack is gone uh, from that defense, and uh, that's that his presence is going to be missed. Uh, but everything else, same thing. Like you said, I had got Chicago at twenty six. Who do you have? This is, in my opinion, where the tier changes, right? From your utter bottom feeders to yeah. um, uh, your middling teams, and. The bottom of the middling team that I have right now is the Seattle Seahawks at number 26. Okay. Um, look, again, very much like Atlanta right now, kind of in that transition phase. You know, they just got rid of long-time starting quarterback. They got a couple wide receivers that are really nice. They, you know, running back, What? What? you know, is, is it going to be Carson? I don't Carson. know. Uh, defense, right? You know, kind of look at that and go, uh, Bobby Wagner's gone. Yeah. So, um, yeah. And, and then on on top of that, you know, there's a lot of question marks around the coach. You know, how how long is he going to be around? Um, I, I don't know. I think he's the oldest coach in the NFL, isn't he? I think he's in it. I think he's in his high sixties, seventies, maybe. Am I am, yeah. I, am I? am I? Am I being a stretch with that? But I want to say. He's yeah, uh, Pete Carroll. I mean, there's there's been questions about how long Pete's going to be around, and questions a- around you know players there. You know, there, there was talk about Pete and and Russell. You know, one of the mm-hmm. reasons why he wanted to leave. You know, you you wonder does that you know uh, mindset you know float around with the rest of the players? Again, you know, there's just there's there's so many question marks. With Seattle, they they still have a lot of good talent over there, but they lost a lot of good talent as well. And even though they are in a transition phase, I think they're set up better uh, to not really have to do a completely full rebuild, just a retool, uh, as opposed to some of the guys that I have lower on this list. I got you, and that's why I had Seattle at twenty five. Um... Uh, didn't didn't register me P. Carroll's age. Uh, I didn't, you know, put that into my equation. Uh, but you're right. This is like that area to where you're not really like a horrible team. You might have just missed some pieces, had that one year. You hope that you can just retool, re- find those pieces again and be right mm-hmm. back in the hunt for competing for your division. But you are in a tough division. And like you just mentioned, P. Carroll's getting up there in age, but he is a hell of a coach. He does find ways to get those guys to believe, get those guys to fight. Uh, Seattle's always going to be a tough matchup, no matter if they're 8-8 eight and eight or if they're dang 13-2. and two. It doesn't matter. They're going to be a tough matchup. For that reason alone, off of culture, uh, I, I got Seattle is that team that could possibly move up quickly during the season if they got the right pieces in the offseason to fit their system. All right, 25, I got Jets, Jets, Jets. All right, so this team, oh, my goodness, the changeover of this team in the last two years, right? Uh, There's this completely different team this year than they were two years ago. Uh, So much young talent, all new coaching staff, everything. I like how this roster is built. I like the coaching staff on this team, but the problem is they're young, Mm -hmm. inexperienced, and they still got to find themselves with each other. And that's why I have them sitting at number 25. And at 24, the Washington Commanders, Carson Wentz is going to come out this year. 
chip on his shoulder. Everybody think that, you know, they got this narrative about him. I think he's going to come motivated. And I think that uh, – and the reason why I got – them at 24 is because their defense, their front four, or their their D line, the guys that's in the trenches, is some of the best guys in the NFL as a whole, as a group. I mean, those guys can really play. And at one point during the season last year, the defense was carrying those guys. Uh, so you would think that those guys can come back and uh, play the 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 way that they were playing for that first half of the season last year. And you hope that Carson can come in and be better and be that person that can win them the games when needed uh, to win it from their from their offense. I mean, you got a good wide receiver, uh, got probably a couple good wide receivers over there, um, and you're in a position at 24 that I say that uh, you competing with Philly, competing with Dallas, you mess around and win that division, get in the playoffs. You just never know how it works, especially when you got a good defense and you got a quarterback that can win you some games. So I had Washington – at that that spot to where they can definitely spring up on that list if the, if the year goes the way that they think it can go. I want to let everybody know that uh, we did not compare notes at all before <laughs> we started. I have the Washington Commanders number twenty four. Okay, <laughs> uh, you you pretty much said took everything out of my mouth on that situation. So. Uh, those of you watching and listening, just kind of rewind a little bit and listen to Gerard again. So uh, <laughs> move forward then in 23, I had the New York Jets. And I think Zach Wilson has had an awesome offseason, especially with all the speculation going on with his girlfriend, best friend, mother, all that type of stuff. So he's he's bringing the, the, the attention back to the Jets in New York uh, that's needed. But other than that, I mean, I think they got a good head coach, defensive head coach from, uh, you know, coming out of San Francisco, who his first year had a young team, bunch of rookies, like you said. Uh, Elijah Moore at wide receiver, got some guys that can really, in year two, become guys in this league. And I, mm -hmm. think, they, I think the Jets can be one of those scary teams that you just don't want to face, you know, in, in, in crucial times because you got this young emerging talent and you would hope or you would expect them to take a step forward in year two with the with the young core that they have. My number twenty three might shock some people. They, uh, I might have them a little lower than a lot of people think I should, but it's the Arizona Cardinals. <laughs> no question, that is low for them. <laughs> <laughs> for you, um, I have the Arizona Cardinals sitting at number twenty three for uh, a couple reasons, actually. One. Um, they lost a little bit there, uh, on their offense. Um, number two, I'm not as high on Kyler Murray as a lot of people are. I think that, uh, look, everyone wants to put a comparison between him and Russell Wilson. And I, other than his height and his ability to move around, I don't see the comparison there. Russell's a much better decision maker and a much better thrower of the football, in my opinion, than Kyler Murray. And um, uh, I, look, I understand that Kyler wants to get paid, but you got to prove it in the NFL. And I don't think he's actually proved it. Uh, all, all that I've seen is him fold in the second half of seasons. That's what I've seen, right? Start off great. And then next thing you know, you know, he's throwing games away uh, or, you know, running them away, you know, whatever. So, uh, and then on the defense, they lost Chandler Jones. Uh, your your main guy over there is, uh, will he play six games, J.J. Watt? I, I don't know. You know, I, I love J.J. Watt, one of the greatest defensive ends of all time, right? right? But he's at that age and at that point in his career where health is a serious concern with this guy. Um, I, I, got, I got Arizona sitting pretty low uh, at 23. I don't expect. I, I think they're a middling team. I think if they hit eight and eight, it'll be uh, an impressive season for them. Okay. All right. I, I'm going to move on because I'm going to wait to elaborate where I have Arizona, but I'm going to move on. And what we're, we're at, 22, right? Yes. We're at 22. And for my number 22, it might be low for some. I have the New Orleans Saints. Uh, the reason I have the New Orleans Saints last year wasn't the year that they, you know, wanted. Jameis, you know, gets hurt early in the year when he, you know, had the best start to probably one of the best 
uh, starts to his career since he's been in the league. Um, I, I definitely think the culture over there with Sean Payton, well, not Sean Payton now, uh, but when Sean Payton was over there working with Jameis, I definitely think that he changed Dan uh, Jameis's game uh, to make him the quarterback that everybody think Jameis can be. Um, but you know, you're, you're losing a lot. You kind of don't. You got a new coach. Uh, I want to say it's Dennis Allen, right? Um, losing a lot. Got a new coach. You know, and uh, tough division. Still got Tom over. Not tough division. You got Tom over there that you got to worry about. That's kind of since he came over to the Bucks and just took over the uh, the NFC South. Panthers are not, you know, worried about nothing. The Falcons, you're not really worried about them. So I know that they're the only team that can threaten the Bucks in that division. Uh, but I'm just not sure how much they're going to be a threat just off of, you know, injuries and, um, you know, is 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 uh, freaking out. I, I just went blank dead and um, 13 top receiver that didn't play last year. Is he going to is he going to come back and, you know, be the guy that he was the year before? Uh, is Jameis going to be the guy that we think he can be, or is he going to revert back to his old ways since Sean Payton's not in the building no more? I just think it's a lot of question marks with the New Orleans Saints. Still in a position where they can move up, have a good year, but could be in a position where they can move down uh, as well. So I have the Saints at 22. I, I can forgive you for not remembering Michael Thomas's name. Michael Thomas. Oh, my gosh. All right. I can forgive you because we haven't had to say his name in so long, right? So, uh, it, it's okay, man. It's yeah. okay. I forgive you, man. Um, I, this this team might be ranked. I, he is. This team is ranked at number 22, a lot higher than where you have them. Uh, that's why when you stated the Lions back when you did it, I was like, what? Mm -hmm. uh, look, I got the Lions sitting at 22. Um, I understand that as an organization, they have a history. Okay. And I get that. But the reason why I have them sitting at 22 higher than you do is it is okay. You got a veteran quarterback sitting back there. Second year in the system, Deandre Swift sitting back there. He looked pretty decent. I think he's going to get even better. Um, Everyone believes in the system. We talked about earlier where, you know, there's problems in the locker room and players don't believe in this and that, and it causes issues. When you have players that believe in your coach and believe in, 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 in your system, that's going to do wonders for you, even if you are lacking in talent, right? A team that plays together wins together. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that the Lions, even though they're lacking in some areas, um, I think that uh, just the way that they'll um, pull together will help them at least be somewhere in the eight and eight range, I think, in, in, in uh, next year's uh, season. What you got at 21, man? Man, 21, I have the Vikings. And uh, I wanted to put the Vikings higher just off of the talent that they have. I mean, you get Zadarius uh, Smith uh, from Green Bay, Jordan Hicks. Uh, you get those guys to come in on the defense. You got Pat P. You got Harrison Smith. Like, you've got pieces. But for whatever reason, they've just been mediocre from the start seem like um I, I do believe the quarterback I'm going blank dead again I do believe Kirk Cousins Kirk Cousins there we go I do <laughs> believe that Kirk Cousins is gonna beat Aaron Rodgers this year this is the year to do it we don't know what Green Bay has at wide receiver only thing we know Green Bay got is a good running back and a the damn Hall of Fame quarterback so if you're <laughs> gonna do it Vikings is gonna be this year we know that's their the main people that they got to go through. But from an organizational standpoint, uh, like I said, they have the talent. They they got all those things. But I don't know if it's something culturally or, or what that's just keeping them mediocre. Uh, so I, I have them in that position. Well, who, who do you have? Oh, I know a lot of people's going to be upset with me on this one. At 21, I have the New England Patriots. Okay. Okay. Um, look, their defense is aging. Mm -hmm. Um. I have not a lot of faith in their, uh, quite frankly, play calling ability this year. Uh, yeah, their offensive coordinator that they've had for years is gone, right? He's over with the Raiders. Um, I, don't, I don't know. Uh, they didn't even go hire an offensive coordinator. You know, I, I don't expect Bill Belichick to be calling plays. 
Uh, that's just too much on his plate when he's calling defense and offense and running the game. That you just you can't do that. All right. So um, they don't have a star, uh, a superstar wide receiver. They don't have a superstar uh, quarterback. Um, good. They're solid players, but there's nothing on the offense that makes you go, wow, right? right. Kind of an average, kind of average. They could they could run the ball on you. Uh, they could throw it when they need to. It's just kind of an average team. But the defense, their front seven, yeah, front seven looks pretty decent. Front seven looks pretty good over there. I, I like some of the young pieces. But the secondary, uh, that's – that's a problem. I think the Patriots secondary, which is weird to say about the New England Patriots because they have, for uh, for years and years, their secondary has been their strength of this team. Yeah. And now you're like, who's your number one corner? I, I don't know. Yeah. You know, uh, your, your, your safety is, uh, wait, McCordy, yeah. Yeah, De- Devin's back. Jason retired. The, the yeah. Retired. Yep. yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm like, and, and, and again, you know, age there, right? Uh, so yeah, there's, there's a lot of question marks across the board, uh, for the New England Patriots, and that's why I think I have them falling a little bit to number twenty-one. All right, and here we go again with the back and forth. I had the new a New England Patriots at twenty, and the reason is. Everybody's banking. I like I'm a I like Mac Jones. I do mm-hmm. think he's gonna have a hell of a career, but everybody is putting that Tom Brady coat on him too early as if he can make normal receivers better than what they are. That still has not been proven yet. I still think that Mac Mac Jones got a few more years in development till we find out if he can do some of the things that Brady did in Belichick's system. And with that being said, like you said. They already, you know, didn't have many receivers as it is, you know, nobody to throw to. In defense, you losing all your guys. You lose a corner that had 10 picks last year, however many J.C. Jackson have. Uh, you, lo- you lose your main guys on defense. So I, I, I'm with you. You didn't have a big offseason. It ain't like you brought some guys in that's just, you know, uh, just like a wow factor into your offseason. So I'm, I'm with you on the question marks about the New England Patriots going forward. But like you said, they do have – if not the greatest coach in all of sports. Uh, so we'll see if he can work his magic again. But, you know, this could be a disappointing year for the Patriots if things don't go right. Absolutely. At number 20, I have the Miami Dolphins. Mm-hmm. Um, look, they've got a lot of things to look at on this team and go, that's impressive. Okay. They got a nice receiving core. They got a great defense. Uh but uh, there's a couple things that is holding this team back. Okay. Number one is the quarterback. Uh, that's, that's a problem. Uh, now could Tua take a step forward. We'll find out the, the dolphins brass decided, you know what? We're going to give him every chance in the world to show us. He could be that quarterback and went out and got him all the weapons, just all of them, right? <laughs> they they got rid of uh, one wide receiver and replaced him with, you know, Tyreek Hill, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, they said, you go to New England and we'll take Hill, all right? So um, coaching, question mark. Don't know how he's going to be as a head coach. You look at him and you go, well, this guy don't even look like a head coach, right? right. <laughs> he looks like he should be building Legos. No offense to the kicker for the Indianapolis Colts. But <laughs> yeah, he's, he's he's a different guy, all right? And uh, I shouldn't have said something about his looks, but it's his brain. That's what I'm curious about. I don't know a lot about this guy, all right? And I want to know. Uh, he's got some shoes to fill in for Brian Flores. Uh, quite frankly, I loved how Brian Flores, uh, coached this team and now, uh, they're, they're sitting in this situation. I don't think that they're going to have a losing record this year, Mm -hmm. uh, which is, uh, something impressive considering, you know, I've got them at 20, which means 
a, there's there's a huge difference between the top teams in the NFL and the bottom teams, in my opinion. So no, nah, that, that that's true. Now going to nineteen is where I have the Arizona Cardinals, and um, some of the same things. I mean, you you have an off season where Kyler Murray is unhappy. He's happy. He's unhappy. Like who knows what the situation is, but everybody knows he wants to get paid. And then, like you said, you lose Chandler Jones and uh, some key pieces. And then on top of that, I think from a GM standpoint with Steve Kime, I think this is a make or break year for him. I, I think if they don't have the year that, you know, they supposed to have, I think this might be his last go around as a GM. So I think it's going to be a lot of pressure on the Cardinals going into this football season for them to be good because even though we can see the I mean we have our doubts in in some areas to Kyler Murray's game but on on the west coast on their side of things they think they have one of the more one of the more premier quarterbacks in the league somebody that can you know win games with 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 certain attributes that you can't coach or teach and obviously Kyler with his feet able to escape able to throw on a run do different things like that but another key piece is DeAndre Hopkins is not going to be there for the first six games. And with him not being there for the first six games of the season, I mean, who knows how the season can go uh, when you don't have a true number one receiver, you know, out there by your side. So uh, I think it's going to be a lot of pressure on the Cardinals this year. And like I said, if it's a year that they don't, you know, live up to some of these expectations that they've had the past few years, uh, which, like you've said, start hot beginning of the year, middle of the year, and towards the end of the year, for whatever reason, everything falls apart. Um, I think I think they'll be in a rebuilding phase as well uh, going forward. So I have I have the Cardinals at nineteen. Okay, nineteen. I got the Minnesota Vikings, and this offense is lit. Okay. Uh, I mean, it is lit. You got Justin Jefferson. You got Adam Thielen. You got Cook. Uh, you got uh, Don't Sleep on Irv Smith Jr. at tight end, right? Um, this this offense is absolutely lit. I think the defense, they did some moves around to try to kind of solidify that a little bit. I think that they are a team that could legitimately turn some heads this year. I don't have them in my top 10. But again, like you said, you know, they're just keep an eye on this team. They could they could legitimately be really good or as history has proven, they could fall off again. Right. Uh, yeah. And be that mediocre team at 18. Now, this is where I know we're going to have a different uh opinion about because i know you're high on this quarterback i know that you like this quarterback a lot and you like the weapons that this quarterback have at 18 i have the las vegas raiders and the reason i have the las vegas raiders is not because of their offense it's because of their defense i think their defense is still a question mark i still think that they are several pieces away for being elite like they need to be elite <coughs> especially in that division now uh when you're talking about the broncos the chiefs the chargers of course you're gonna have to put up points but damn somebody's gonna have to stop somebody and uh and i think if i had to choose which defense out of those you know three i'm gonna say the raiders have probably the weaker defense you know with a elite offense that you just can't bank on the offense taking you deep uh, into the playoffs. I mean, of course, it's going to look good. Seasonal stats and all that. Everybody know Derek Carr is going to throw 350 a game. Uh, Devontae Adams is still going to have a big year. All those things are going to be true offensively. But the reason that they will lose if they lose is going to be because of their defense. I like Max Crosby. Don't get me wrong. I do think they got some good players. But I think they're a few pieces away on defense from being the elite team that they can be. What about you? I know Derek Carr's your guy. I know he's your guy. Oh, 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 trust me. Uh, this is the biggest discrepancy in our lists. <laughs> <laughs> okay. By far. Um, but that's okay. That's okay. I respect I, I respect your opinion, man. Um, number 18, I got the Saints. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, look, they got a lot of guys over there. Problem, you know, uh, your running back is going to be suspended. All right, uh, or has he already been? I don't yeah, know. He's gonna be suspended. I, yeah. I, I want to say he already 
Uh, I'm not going to even say it, but yeah. Either, got- either way, he, he's got one coming if he hasn't got it already, and it's going to yep. be a, a, a few. All right. Um, there's you know questions about Jameis Winston, right? He's going to be the quarterback. Look, I think he's better than that last year with Tampa Bay. All right. Uh, I think, you know, that was kind of that, that last year that he was with Tampa Bay was a little bit of a, a, a blip in his, you know, career. I don't think he's a 30 interception guy. Okay. Uh, as a career quarterback. Um, but again, you know, Michael Thomas, what's he going to look like when he comes back? Right. Uh, you lost a lot on defense. You lost your, uh, your, your, your starting tackle, uh, on the offensive line. Uh, you lost some pieces over there. You do not have Sean Payton over there anymore. Um, there's a lot there to go. We need to see. We just need to see what this team looks. Give me a, a two weeks, and right. I can give you a better kind of grip on on what the New Orleans Saints is going to give. But I think Jameis is going to play better than what a lot of people think he will. And that's why I've got them sitting at 18. Gotcha. At 17, I have the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, Big year for Jalen Hurts. Big year for Jalen Hurts. I mean, you get A.J. Brown the offseason to go with Devontae Smith. You got Dallas uh, Goddard. I think that's how you say his last name. Excuse me. Goddard. Goddard. There we go. Um, you know, you let Zach Ertz walk, uh, walk to Arizona, which we didn't mention that with Arizona. You do got Zach Ertz over there. Um, and then defensively, uh, they get, I want to say they got JC, they the ones that got JC Jackson. Um, if I, if I remember correctly, but defensively, I think they're going to be fine. We're talking about a team that made the playoffs last year. And I think they got better this off season with the moves that they made. I got Philadelphia at 17 just because I think they're in a position to either prime themselves for years to come to be one of the more premier teams, or they're going to be looking for a quarterback next year again. All right. At number 17, this is where I'm going to get screamed at by certain fan base uh, because they, they follow the Colts a lot and like to complain uh, about, (laughs) <laughs> where we ranked them. Well, I got the Tennessee Titans at number 17, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, look, <laughs> one of my favorite coaches in the NFL is on that team. Okay. Mike Rabel is awesome. I have nothing but utter respect for Mike Rabel. But your passing attack is completely and utterly questionable this year. Okay. Mm-hmm. you your number one wide receiver, not there. Your number two wide receiver from last year is not there. Your number three wide receiver from last year is not there. Derrick Henry is coming off a a foot injury. Uh, And he's at that age right now where coming off an injury for a running back who is a physical running back and coming off an injury, there's question marks there. Can Ryan Tannehill uh, put a, put the the team on his shoulders in situations that need to be put on his situations as of recently he has proven he can't so you know there there's a lot of question marks uh now granted you went out and used uh the pick that you got on the trade uh speaking of the eagles right um you use that to to go out and get who you think is uh a photocopy of AJ Brown, but for younger, but he's still got to prove it on the field. We don't know. Um, I still like this defense. The defense is nasty. Uh, well coached team. I still think that they're a, 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 a playoff team. I just, I can't have them any higher than 17 because that offense is incredibly questionable, especially in the passing game. Gotcha, gotcha. At 16, I have the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yes, they're looking for a quarterback, obviously. We we know that. But the main factor in Pittsburgh is not necessarily a player in my, my perspective. It's Mike Tomlin. I think Pittsburgh is going to be good regardless who's at quarterback. And when I say good, you know they're going to have a top defense. They're going to have a top five defense this year. 
Um, you know, you got you got all those superstars on that side, and then you got a staple at running back with Najee Harris. So you got pieces in place. You got wide receivers. You got a running back. You got a great defense. You just need a quarterback for this year not to lose the game. You need somebody that can go in there, manage, make a couple big throws here and there, but you're going to play through Najee, obviously, and then you're going to lean on your defense. And then, like you say, you got one of the best coaches in football, period, and Mike Tomlin. Uh, I have them at 16 just because they're not – they don't have a for sure quarterback yet. If they did, they probably would be higher in my list just because of how good they consistently be and the players that they have. But I have I have the Steelers right there in that middle range, uh, you know, that, that we, we definitely will see towards the end of the year in the top 10 probably. Yeah, yeah. Um, number 16, I have the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, look, they have some talent over there. Um, yes, they lost Amari Cooper, uh, but they still got plenty of wide receivers behind him, right? Uh, for Dak to throw, they got a, a, a nice dual pair of running backs over there. The The question to me is the coaching over there, in my, in my opinion. this uh, That's where the question is. Uh, uh, maybe a little bit of their pa- uh, pass rush. Uh, I'm a little worried about that as well. Um, they still have Tank Lawrence over there, uh, but they don't have Randall Gregory no more. Um, they do have Minka, or not Minka, but Micah. Um, Minka? No, you're right, Minka. Is it Minka? Yeah, Minka. Yeah. Oh, I thought that was the Steelers guy. Oh, it, I thought you were. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dallas, I'm Dallas, sorry. Micah. Yeah, Micah. Micah Parsons. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he is. He is a. He was absolutely phenomenal last year. Right. Uh, hey, and, I, and while you're on him, did you see him beat all the DBs and wide receivers at his last workout in racing? <laughs> no, I didn't. Oh, my gosh. They, they had a race to where they were just after a workout. Let's go out there and race. I want to say they raced maybe 20 yards, 30 yards. He beat everybody like by three steps. Wow. <laughs> you got to go YouTube that when we get done. Oh, I am going to have to. Wow. Um, but yeah, uh, look, this there's still questions on this defense, even with Micah over there. And I understand I'm, I'm not as high on their cornerback. That was an all pro last year uh, because of how many interceptions he had, because I'm looking at it going, well, yeah, he had a lot of interceptions, but he was, he was one of those huge flip corners, right? Where, yeah, he's, he's going to get the interceptions, but he's also gave up a ton of catches, a ton of yards and a ton of touchdowns. Okay. Yeah. So that was, that's, that's a little bit, you don't want that, right? I'd rather have, a guy who's kind of in the middle on all of that rather than one guy who's, you know, really flipped like that. Um, so that's that a yeah, little bit of question marks on the, on the defense question marks over there on, on the coaching, but that offense it's it's lights out. Uh, and that's why I have the Cowboys sitting at 16. At 15 is where I have the Tennessee Titans. Uh, like you said, they don't have anybody to throw to right now. Robert Woods coming off of ACL. I hope he has. I hope he's fine. And he has, uh, you know, the type of year that we know he can have. Ron Tannehill, you're not going to bank on him winning the game for you. You want to keep Derrick Henry as healthy as you can and lean on him. But we all know how that's going to go in this NFL battle. We haven't seen too many running backs that, that can just get through a season without getting banged up. And we know Derrick Henry is going to get 25 plus carries a game uh, for the most part. Uh, defensively, like you said, first, Mike, Mike Vrabel, hell of a coach, do a good job uh, over there. I'm a big fan of him as well. You know he's going to have the defense ready to go. Um, uh, but I have them at I have them at 15 just because of no offensive perimeter weapons. Absolutely. Uh, going down my list, number 15, I is where I put the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, you hit it right on the head. Uh, this this team is known for their defense, and they got better on defense. All right. They went out and got a couple guys. They got a guy on the D line, they got a linebacker. All right. Uh, linebacker Miles uh, Miles Jack. Mm-hmm. They went and picked him up to help in the middle. Uh, they picked up a defensive tackle to help with the run defense as well. This team's already incredibly aggressive and incredibly opportunistic on defense. Is there question marks at quarterback? Absolutely. But ask yourself this: Is Mitch Trubisky or the or the rookie? legitimately going to be an upgrade over last year's Ben Roethlisberger? 
Hmm. I think on first, I think on first and second down, probably, uh, maybe not on third down in crunch situations because, you know, his experience was, was there for that. But, uh, for, for the majority parts of the games, I think the, the replacements might be better than what Roethlisberger was last year. Not as a whole, obviously Roethlisberger. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Roethlisberger is a hall of fame quarterback. Um, just last year, um, Najee Harris, heck of a running back. All right. Love him as a running back. He's a hard nosed uh kind of guy. They I think they fixed their problem in the middle of their offensive line. The only question mark is wide receivers outside outside of Chase or Claypool. <laughs> who are they throwing the football to? No, they got uh check uh Chase is not even the, the best one. It's uh, Deontay. Um, Johnson? Johnson. He's the one that was holding out uh, for the deal and all that. So I think he's going to emerge as the number one guy for him. And I think Chase will be like 1B, uh, 1B for him. So, uh, I, see, I think they let go of their best. Uh, Juju? Yeah. See, I, 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 won, I won as big on Juju. I thought, I thought the I, other guys were just more explosive. I don't like his on-the-field antics. Right, I don't like his antics, but I thought he was a better overall wide receiver uh, than than Deontay. Um, and plus, uh, they also lost another wide receiver that I thought was very, very good, uh, or had the potential to be good. Um, but yeah, uh, it's hard. It's really hard. Again, much like Mike Vrabel, it's very difficult to uh, uh, bet against Mike Tomlin. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I've got him sitting right at 15. At 14 is where I put the Miami Dolphins. Tua, wow. Tua, can you have the year that everybody is hoping for? I mean, you got weapons all across the board. Um, I mean, Tyreek Hill and, and um, freaking, uh, oh, my gosh, why am I going blank with these names today? Tyreek Hill, and then you have uh, – Jeez, jeez, the other kid from Alabama, the wide receiver that's a bar. Jalen Waddle. Jalen freaking Waddle. The reason I don't <laughs> remember his name because I'm an Auburn guy. We're trying to remember <laughs> guy's name. But, but I mean, you look and at – Mike Gisecki. That's yeah. a solid guy, too. You look at uh, you look <clears> at Robin <throat> Hill and Jalen Waddle, man. We're talking about two dynamic – they're just different. They're not your typical style wide receivers. We're talking about guys that can get – to zero to 60 in a split second. And um, you already know when it comes to Tyreek Hill, how defense is game plan for him. So now you got two guys that's similar. Somebody's going to have a one-on-one type matchup on the perimeter rather than how when Tyreek Hill was with the Chiefs, you got one guy on the perimeter and then uh, then you got a uh, freaking uh, Kelsey more so in the core at the tight end position, which is a different, even though he's a, a matchup problem, it's different dealing with a tight end and a wide receiver. Jalen Waddle can catch a three-yard slant, make one guy miss, and beat you to the end zone just like Tyreek Hill can. So I'm excited to see it. I mean, Tua got drafted because of his arm. He got drafted because of his accuracy. He got drafted because of those things. Now it's not gonna, he's not going to have an excuse uh, uh, at all when it comes to is if he can get the ball to these guys. So I think and, – and on defense, Xavier Howard and those guys, like you said, um, Flores did a good job in building that program up. He did a good job in coaching those guys up. And I just think they can go forward, especially if this uh, coach that they got can kind of bring that flavor to them. I mean, he come from San Francisco to where he was designing plays like crazy, like we've never seen before. So if he can bring some of that flavor to the Dolphins and get some of those matchups he wants, they're just going to be tough to game plan for and tough to beat, man. So I got them sitting at 14. Absolutely. I I, I respect that. I mean, um, number 14, I got the Eagles. So we kind of got the Dolphins and the Eagles flipped where, you know, on our, on our situation. Look, Jalen Hurts is scary as a running quarterback, but he still is somebody I had question when it comes to the passing game um i like that but otherwise i'd have them even higher mm-hmm. uh the eagles went out and got weapons they got a solid defense uh man i have all the faith in the world in their head coach 
uh, just because he was former offensive coordinator Nick Sirianni for the the the, the Colts. Uh, I like this team. I really do. I think Hurts is holding them back. Okay. Uh, you yeah. Hurts after year one. Mm-hmm. Ooh, okay. Mm -hmm. I think Hertz is holding them back. Now, a lot of people think that Hertz is going to grow. I, I think he's limited. I think Jalen Hertz is limited. And uh, look, you you want to people want to make comparisons with Lamar Jackson. He's not Lamar Jackson, guys. Okay, he's he's not. He doesn't have Lamar's size to be and stay as healthy as long as Lamar has doing what he's doing. Hertz is going to have to develop that passing game. And if he can't, I think that's going to hold this team back. I gotcha. At 13, I have our Indianapolis Colts at 13. Um, got us right outside the top 10 just because I don't think we deserve to be in the top 10. Uh, but we got pieces, man. You got a running back. Uh, you got a quarterback now. Of course, we're, we're waiting for guys to come out of the wide receiver room. But it, from the sounds and the reports we're hearing, it looks like, you know, everybody's confident in what we got going defensively. We got playmakers all over the field, point blank, period. Um, and I think that's where we're going to kind of establish ourselves uh, in the NFL this year. I think we're going to be more of a defensive um, face type team where, where when you say the coach name you're going to think defense before you think offense I think Jonathan Taylor is going to uh, continue to thrive and have another big year and like I said if he can get off to a good start I think that'll help Matt Ryan kind of ease his way into finding whoever he has to find in the on the perimeter game to be kind of his staple uh, but if we have to put the ball in Matt Ryan hands early I think we'll struggle on offense this year if we got a bank on Matt Rahm winning games for us. So if we get that run game going, offensive line gets solidified, I think we're going to be fine. That's respectable. 13 is respectable. I, 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 I'll give you that. You know, I, I can respect the Colts at 13. I got the Niners at 13. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, very similar situation. The the only question is uh, quarterback. Um, uh, I that's that's my question right mm -hmm. um we don't know what to really expect uh with the new quarterback sitting over there because he could do so much more than what they've had at quarterback the last few years in Jimmy Garoppolo um uh, can he throw it as well can, can can he see the defense as well that kind of stuff you know that's that's the big question but Offensively, defensively, as long as this team stays healthy, uh, they are a, a team to be reckoned with no matter what. Um, I, I think Jimmy G was, in a way, holding this team back um, as well. Uh, not in the same way. The complete flip opposite, obviously, of Jalen Hurts, who I had earlier. Uh, Jimmy doesn't throw deep well and doesn't move as well. Right. Um, that's that's my problem with Jimmy G. Uh, but I like the Niners. It's going to be interesting to see uh, what the Shanahan offense is going to look like with this new quarterback that they have. Yeah. And that's why I had the Niners at 12. Oh, is it? We're at 11 now, or 12. I'm sorry. 12. Yeah. That's why that's why I had the Niners at 12. Uh, same reasons. Um I mean, I know Jimmy is still there and, you know, trying to move on to Trey or whatever the situation is right there at the quarterback. Everybody knows it's supposed to be Trey from what I've been hearing. You know, can he do it? Yay, nay, who knows? We'll see. He's still in that development phase. But defensively, they're one of those teams that defensively we know they're going to be good. D'Amico Ron's over there as a defensive coordinator going into his second year. I thought he did a hell of a job his first year. They already have the culture. They win games. It's not like we're talking about a bad football team. We're talking about a team that knows how to win games. They got a great coach. Uh, it's just a matter of them finding that. I mean, it's just a matter of them if that quarterback can just take them over the hump. We all know the talent that Trey Lance has. This is going to be the year to show it. Uh, Kyle Shanahan, I mean, one of the best offensive minds in football. That's why he's over there as the head coach. But, I mean, it's still – I think the 49ers is still – we got something to see from them. I think it's still something that they have to show uh, that they can do and compete and uh, be that elite team. Awesome. 
I got the. I almost can't read this word here. I can't spell worth a darn. Apparently, apparently I. Oh, okay. I was writing really fast. Cleveland. I got the Cleveland Browns sitting at number 12. Okay. Uh, look. The one question mark. And we all know what the one question mark is about the Browns. Okay. Yeah. Uh, they've got talent and ability across the board on this team. If Deshaun Watson started week one, they would be a top five team in my opinion. Okay. But – but we don't know what's going on with this team. And that's why I have to drop them as far as number 12, because I'm sorry if Deshaun Watson is suspended for the entire season. Jacoby Brissett, I love you. All right. You were great with the Colts. You're a great person guy. You're great with the fans. You're great with the locker room. You're great on the field. You're the best cheerleader out there. Okay. I, I love what you do out there, but, you have limits as a quarterback as well, and no offense, but you're not Deshaun Watson, okay? So, um, yeah, that's that's my situation. It's the question – it's that question mark at quarterback uh, with what's going to happen at that situation is why I've got them sitting at number 12. Yep, and that's why I have them at number 11. Uh, <laughs> I mean, like you said, I mean, the talent is there, man. I mean, defensively, offensively, I mean, you have weapons all across the board. You got freaking one of the best running back tandems in football. You got a good old line. So, if, if like you said, Deshaun Watson is the starter week one, I would have had them, I don't know, top five, maybe top six, top seven, but they definitely would have been one of the more elite teams, top teams, one of the teams everybody need to keep an eye on, look at uh, prom time football, that type of deal. Uh, but like you said, we, we just don't know what's going on. And I love Jacoby Brissett as well. I think he's a hell of a quarterback. I think he's, you know, great at what he does. But just like you said, you're not Deshaun Watson at the end of the day. Just sometimes certain guys can just make certain plays that you just can't explain. And that's what Deshaun brings to your offense. So that's why I have them at 11. Yep. It's the last one before the end of this episode. Because we're going to do a top 10 will be because we'll, we'll, we we're already at over an hour. So the top 10 will come out on the next episode. At number 11, I have the Indianapolis Colts. I'm with you on the just outside of the top 10. Look, I love what the Colts have done. Love, but there's question marks still about this team. Okay. I think that do they have the defense? I think I agree with their top five defense easy in the NFL this year. I think they're going to surprise a lot of people. Um, Look, uh, you look at their uh, what what they've got across the board. They've got more pro bowlers on their defense, all pros on their defense, than most teams have on their entire team, right? Um, there's a, a fantastic defense. Jonathan Taylor's going to be Jonathan Taylor. I, I think Matt Ryan's still a great quarterback. Um, but, again, it's like the fifth year, sixth year in a row that we've had a new starting quarterback. Mm -hmm. So you got you, there's going to be there's going to be time there where uh, it's going to take a little time for the receivers and and the quarterback and you know all that to kind of meld and mesh with each other. Um, there's a question mark: Who's going to step up and fill that number two wide receiver role? Who's going to step up and and take that number one tight end role? You know, is it going to be Moali Cox? Is it going to be Jelani Woods? You know, is Kylan Granson going to, you know, step up and, and, and hold down that I'm doubling down that I'm taking over. And then my second year, uh, when, when we had that, inter when I had that interview with him, you, you remember that when he said that, uh, there's lots of stuff there. Uh, I, I like where this Colts team is. I just got them right out that top 10 because let's face it, the top 10, those are a lot of really, really good teams out there. Mm -hmm. um, thanks for watching this episode. Make sure you keep an eye out tomorrow as we upload our top 10 NFL players or teams in the NFL for the 2022 season. I'm Lawrence Owen. That's Gerard Powers. 
This was Believe in Colts brought to you by Bet Online. And until next time, have a good one. Go Colts. <laughs>